each name, too! Well, it's fairly complicated. Let me give you the condensed version. The Fatui again? We can't go anywhere without them causing trouble. But what if the Fatui finds out you've lost your power? Won't they try to take advantage of the situation? <laughs> That's why it has to be our little secret. No one else can know, or we're asking for trouble. Look, I wish I could offer you some sort of consolation, but I won't lie to you. With multiple factions closing in, there's nothing comforting about the situation we're facing. Still, all you need to do is focus on your goal. You can leave the complicated matters to me. I can also step in on the Pyro Archon's behalf. There's a limit to what I can accomplish, but I'll help you however I can. <laughs> There's no need to be so modest, Yansan. Your incredible strength has long been a well-known fact. You're the pride of your tribe. Archon, I... I'm sorry about before. You have so much on your plate. So much that you have to worry about. But all I could do was focus on my own feelings. You have nothing to be sorry about. We all get overwhelmed by our emotions, myself included. Your reaction to Kachina's disappearance, I... I understand that feeling very well. Well, now that we have Kachina's ancient name, let's go track her down. Follow me. What is this place? Hey, isn't that Atea's talisman? <laughs> Good eye. This is where I store all the various mementos I've collected. Wow. I've never seen this place before. There are so many things in here. It looks like there are items from every tribe. Collecting them must have taken a lot of effort. I suppose you could think of it as a hobby of sorts. In Natlan, everyone grows up listening to the stories of heroes. And physical items do a far better job of preserving those stories than our own memory. <sighs> now, I still have some preparations to make for the ceremony, so feel free to take a look around in the meantime. If you're curious about an item, I'm more than willing to tell you about its origins. here. It must have belonged to the people of the springs. That's right. It belongs to a legendary fisherman named Matavaru. I have his entire set of fishing equipment, actually. He and I met in a tavern. He told me about a particular kind of giant fish and his meticulous plan to catch it. In his eyes, I saw a hunger and a strong fighting spirit. To him, the sea was the battlefield upon which he staked his honor. So, did he do it? The next time I saw him, he was covered in scars. It turned out the fish he sought had been corroded by the abyss. He managed to kill the fish, but sustained a serious injury in the process, which meant he could never go deep sea fishing again. Can a fisherman claim victory if he fails to bring back his catch? That's what he asked me in the end. Well, Paimon thinks he won. That was my answer as well. The experience was far more valuable than the prize itself. In the end, he didn't want his tools to go to waste, so he gave them to me. Wait, that means you also know how to fish. <laughs> Maybe we can go head to head sometime.
This flower looks like it's thriving. You must be good at taking care of plants, Archon. Whoa, that belt is bigger than Paimon's head! The Collective of Plenty are known for their bodybuilding competitions and contests of strength. This belt is a symbol of great honor within the tribe. The association with strength might also have been the reason the original belt was extremely heavy. It was difficult for even two people to lift. And even if a warrior had the strength to put it on, wearing it for any length of time would still leave them gasping for breath. Sounds like it. So the owner of the original belt, Katera, commissioned a craftsman to make a copy identical in appearance but far lighter in weight. That is the belt you see before you. He would often wear this version when training in order to protect his waist. Or he made a lighter version so he could wear it all the time and show it off. There are so many jars and potions around here. Do they have anything to do with alchemy? No, those belong to the masters of the Nightwind. Their ceremonial tools used to amplify the ability to communicate with the Night Kingdom and the Wyab. Yamaya is an expert in this field, and she taught me a lot. Even though she appears stoic and serious, she actually has a keen sense of humor. The tools you see here are quite traditional. Her students found them outdated, so she passed them on to me. The contents of the jars aren't all that special. Oh, uh, except the big jar in the middle. That's what she really wanted to give me. Ooh, must be something really cool! What's inside? Grape juice. Huh? <laughs> it's quite tasty, although probably expired by now. Whoa, this weapon is huge! Which tribe did it belong to? Ah, that weapon belonged to Tainoch, a hero from 500 years ago. Strictly speaking, he didn't belong to any single tribe. That's because even before the disaster with the Abyss broke out, he had already been exiled. Exiled? It was a punishment imposed out of necessity, but he accepted it all the same. He believed it was what he deserved. When the Abyss attacked, the tribes found themselves in urgent need of a powerful figure to lead them into the battle, and there was no one more courageous or resolute than him. He united the six tribes and accomplished great feats throughout the war. Ultimately, he perished, and because he had already lost his ancient name, the Ode of Resurrection was unable to bring him back. And so, he was laid to rest, alongside the countless warriors and civilians who lost their lives, buried in the soil of his native land. Wow. He sounds like a true hero. <laughs> Indeed. Even now, his story is told throughout the land. Atea's talisman. I'm sure you're familiar with this one already. Atea was rarely ever without it. The talisman brought her a lot of luck in battle. This fishing basket looks familiar. Make sure to handle everything with care. This cup, for example, it's heavier than it looks. The powder still needs some time to settle. So let's wait a little longer. Well... What do you think of my collection? 
Do you feel like you have a better understanding of Natland's culture now? Yeah! If each item represents a different story, seems like Natland's really been through a lot. Does every item hold a special memory, just like Atea's talisman? That's right. The items in my collection actually serve a similar purpose to the ancient names passed down among the tribes. They demonstrate the true shape of time. The shape of time? Most people perceive time as a linear concept, almost like a straight line that can only move forward. We cannot change the past or predict the future. But there's also a different theory, one that I believe to be closer to the truth. Namely, that the past, present, and future all exist at once. At once? Paimon's not sure she understands. Uh, let's say your journey ended right now. Thinking back on your experience in each nation, which one would you say was the most important? Exactly. Even at the end of your journey, the things you experienced along the way don't cease to exist. They become part of who you are. Take out a portion of that journey, and you would likely make very different decisions, and eventually arrive at a very different destination. The future is the same way. It exists even though it has yet to come to pass. We just lack the means to perceive it. Of of course, there are those with the power to foresee the future. They simply call it by a different name. Fate. <laughs> You're quite familiar with that concept, I would imagine. Uh, that does kind of make sense. The future hasn't happened, but already exists. Humanity excels at living in the present, but too often we forget the past and neglect the future. While the pilgrimage and the Night Warden Wars lead us to a better future. Only by uniting the people of Natlan across countless eras can we fight back against an enemy as formidable as the Abyss. To come up with such a set of rules, the first Pyro Archon must have possessed a level of insight I can only imagine. That's correct. At first, he was a mortal man with no special power. After he ascended to the Divine Throne, he used it to borrow power from the heavens and establish the rules of Natlan. Namely, a framework through which ordinary people can ascend to Archonhood. By holding the pilgrimage, we're able to determine the strongest among us. And when that person ascends to the Divine Throne, their inner flame will awaken. In addition, the Sacred Flame will grant them significant knowledge and memory of this land. After all, that's how I came to know everything I just told you. So, it all comes down to the power of the Divine Throne and the rules. Wait, is that a family portrait? <laughs> yes. That's my mother, father, younger sister, and the little Saurians we raised. I turned a piece of my dad's leather armor into a canvas and commissioned a famous artist to paint our likeness. Your sister is so cute! It looks like the two of you are really close. I'm always having a hard time thinking of an Archon as an ordinary person, but seeing this portrait, it kind of makes sense now. It really doesn't look like there was anything special about you before. Oh, wait, is Paimon allowed to say that? A little late for that question, don't you think? Sorry! Paimon's so sorry! Paimon's mouth works faster than her brain sometimes! <laughs> it's alright. I'd never get upset over something like that. No matter what others may say, my past is a precious part of my identity. I'm forever proud of the life I used to lead. Becoming the Archon doesn't mean you sever ties with your family. The position just comes with a lot of responsibilities, so it impacts how often you get to see them. My father made the most delicious stew, so my sister would often bring me a large pot of his cooking, and he would sit on a blanket and eat it together. One time, we didn't close the door securely, and the Saurians you were raising ran into the room and knocked over the entire pot. 
My sister immediately burst into tears. The two troublemakers were going for the meat, but when they saw my sister's distress, they froze on the spot. I still remember the way they laid there, sulking like a pair of children, even after making such a mess. It was frustrating, but in the end, all I could do was comfort my sister and move on. Wow. Isn't that what being a family is all about? <laughs> I think about that story a lot, actually. As the Archon, I made a vow to defend this nation, and experiences like that, they remind me exactly what I'm trying to protect. Well, what happened after that? This portrait looks pretty old. Your sister must be all grown up by now, right? I believe she ended up working as an architect and artist. She built many houses and crafted many beautiful works of art. Anyway, that's enough about me. Now that the powder is settled, we can begin. Iansan, Mulani, Chaska, over here, please. Place the ancient name up there, and then we'll begin. Surely, as the echoes of life resound through heaven and earth, so too shall our stories remain eternal. Ancient name, take us to your fated bearer. Allow her to answer our call. Uh, am I hallucinating again? Gina, are you okay? Huh? I, I'm not seeing things, am I? Is... Is the abyss playing tricks on me again? It's okay, Kachina. It's just us. We're trying to find a way to bring you back. Everyone, you have to listen to me. I've been investigating the Night Kingdom this entire time. And I figured out what's wrong. The Wyab is being affected by the Abyss. I was waiting for the Wyab to send me back, but then this really strong monster came in and almost killed me. The Wyab saved me, even though its power is weakening. So I've been hiding from the monsters while trying to find a way to help. The Night Kingdom has become a huge mess, though. I keep hearing these awful sounds and seeing really horrible things. Don't listen to those sounds, Kachina. The Abyss is trying to strip you of your sanity. All you need to do is stay safe and wait for us. We'll be there shortly. It's okay. I feel so much better now that I've had the chance to talk to you guys. You don't need to worry about me. I've never been strong or special at all, really. So I don't blame anyone for forgetting about me or leaving me behind. <laughs> Just knowing you care is more than enough. I'll find a way back. You don't have to put yourselves in danger to come rescue me. You're always like this, Kachina. Now's not the time to act tough. We're coming for you, and that's final. I don't know what lies the Abyss has been feeding you, but I'll tell you something right now. Nobody here sees you as a burden. You're a victor of the Night Warden Wars, a hero of Natlan. All you need to do is wait for us to rescue you, and you'll get all the applause and recognition you deserve. <laughs>
all you need to do is place your trust in us. Just like you always have. No one fights alone. We're not leaving you behind. Not ever. Yeah, we're so close, we can't call it quits now! Looks like we've lost contact. Now comes the most dangerous part. You have to traverse the Night Kingdom in your physical form. This entrance to the Night Kingdom was left behind after an abyssal invasion. Even a brief amount of time inside could expose you to corrosion. I know. I'm prepared for that possibility. All right. Then I wish you all the best. I'll tell Koichi to be ready just in case she's very experienced in dealing with abyssal corruption. That face you just made. Don't tell me you two got into another argument. No, I just... feel bad for creating more work for her. I'll go with them too, Archon. The more people, the stronger the party. Thank you so much for your help, everyone. It really means a lot that you're willing to brave these dangers with me. And there's no time to lose, so let's get going. Now that I've lost my power, I won't be able to provide much practical support. But I can still keep an eye on the situation from here. Eonsan, I know it's unlikely, but if you encounter a situation you can't handle... That won't happen. I hope not. Be careful out there. I'll observe the situation from here. I call dibs. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
So we're underneath Natland right now? It looks nothing like Paimon was imagining. That's because in the distant past, Natlin was home to an incredibly advanced civilization ruled by dragons. Humans only established their own society after the fall of the dragons. So these are Saurian ruins? Wait, you mean like the Elemental Sovereigns? They had their own advanced civilization? Yes, a really long time ago. Very few records have survived until now, so no one really knows what the devices here are for. These ruins have been abandoned for a long time, but with the recent increase in Abyss activity, the installations around here have somehow been activated again. So what you're saying is... We're not in for an easy trip to the Night Kingdom. <laughs> no. It's going to be obstacle after obstacle from here on out. <laughs> <laughs> um, why are you all laughing like that? It's creeping Paimon out! It's the pre-adventure excitement kicking in, right guys? Of course. I'm eager to get started. Then let's go! We won't let anything stand in our way. <laughs> Seems like the road ends here. How should we get across? Professional trainer. I think you could stand to build up your endurance, Paimon. Professional trainer? Paimon thought you were a warrior from the Collective of Plenty. Well, that goes without saying. But I actually work as a sports coach. I provide professional guidance for many of Natland's popular sports. And I don't just mean physical training. I design nutrition plans as well. Ah, so basically no sugar, no soft drinks, no grilled meat. Yeah, yeah, we'll be here all day if you list them out one by one. It's much faster to just focus on what's good for you. Such as? Vegetable juice. Mmm. Want some? You know, Ian-san, Paimon feels like the two of us might not see eye to eye. Those guys look familiar. We fought them before. Let's go. Show no mercy.
place we need to go seems really high up. This is the final stretch. We just need to climb up, and we'll be there. Nothing to it. Easy for you to say. be the entrance the Pyro Archon told us about. The one ripped open by the Abyss. Yes. There's something in the depths of this place that feels familiar, yet also foreign. We actually have to go in there? Okay, Paimon just needs to psych herself up. Don't push her through before she's ready!
Looks like we made it. This is the Night Kingdom. Huh. It looks so different from what I imagined in the stories. That overflow of energy is probably what trapped Kachina here in the first place. From this point forward, everything we know about the real world no longer applies. Anything can happen here. Paimon's more worried about how we're gonna make it out. We obviously can't go back the way we came. Do you see that patch of light on the ground? It's shining down from that fissure in the sky. Oh yeah, right in front of us. So that's coming from up there? Oh, it's so high up. Did we really fall that far down? Just like I said, our real world knowledge doesn't apply here. We fell all this way yet came out completely unscathed. If this was the real world, we'd have to climb our way back up to the entrance. But here, all we have to do is stand underneath the light and offer a prayer. That's it? Right, right. We still got a job to do. So that means all we need to do is find Kachina and bring her to this location. Exactly. This light is streaming in from the real world. It's a link between the two realms. Hmm. The terrain looks difficult to navigate, and the visibility is not great either. How are we supposed to find Kachina in these conditions? Yeah, these floating black things don't look super friendly either. Those are all manifestations of abyssal power. Be careful. Ghost! A talking ghost! Calm down, I'm here to help. You're the ones who helped Fichama, right? Yes, I'm Vichama's friend, Malko. I was completely lost to this realm until I sensed a mysterious power calling out to me. It's like it was seeking me out, attempting to reassemble the pieces of who I used to be. Of course, it could only do so much. I'm sorry I can only appear before you in this imperfect form. No, we should be the ones apologizing. If the Spirit Speaker Stone hadn't become corrupted by the Abyss, we could have done much more, but we had to destroy it. Otherwise, Vichama and his tribe would have been in danger. Of course. Thank you for protecting him. I never imagined that, even after all these years, he'd still take such a risk for me. Under the power of the stone, it felt like our souls were connected. Turns out even our regrets were exactly the same. Whether in triumph or death, you want your best friend by your side. Exactly. That may not be in the cards for us, but it's not too late for you. You're looking for a young girl from the Children of Echoes, right? She's being chased by an embodiment of abyssal power. I'd like to help her while I'm still in this form, so follow me. Be careful. This place has been severely corroded by the Abyss. Simon didn't realize it had gotten this bad. It's like a seething volcano ready to engulf our world at any moment. Ouch! Quick, get back here. You can't go on. Stick close to me. My power will be able to ward off attacks for the time being. We won't be able to keep this up. Let's try another route. This way. Monsters. We shouldn't waste our time on them.
easy to get lost here. Just stick close. Did you hear that? What? Never mind. It was probably just my imagination. Don't scare Paimon like that! I heard it too. It was a voice from the abyss. Ah! What did it say? It doesn't matter. It certainly doesn't harbor good intentions. Kachina! No, oh, honey! You made it! Looks like our reunion will have to wait until we take care of these monsters! Good idea! Let's go! Girl, you did so well. And most importantly, you weren't hurt. Should we start heading back then? Actually, I have a request. Will you come visit the Wyab with me? I can't exactly put it into words, but something's wrong with the Ode of Resurrection. And I know it has something to do with the contamination from the Abyss. That was the Pyro Archon's theory as well. Everything we've seen here certainly seems to back it up. In the Night Kingdom, there are six main totem poles representing the Wyab of each tribe. You can think of them like the body of each Wyab. Additional totem poles, like the ones around here, serve as proxies to which the Wyab can extend their consciousness. There are countless proxies scattered around the Night Kingdom. Through them, the Wyab can extend their consciousness over the entire realm and track down souls no matter where they roam. But if a proxy were to become severely contaminated, then a soul could become lost within the Night Kingdom. Judging by the current situation, I don't think we're dealing with just one contaminated proxy. Even if we could drive back the Abyssal power from one of them, that probably wouldn't even put a dent in the problem. Still... We can't just leave the Wyab to suffer. It's protected me this whole time. I agree. We might even manage to draw out the monster that's been hunting Kachina. Getting rid of the monster might slow down the deterioration of the Night Kingdom. Uh, <sighs> Kachina? What's wrong? N nothing. Just a headache. And that voice again. Telling me to abandon the Wyab and leave this place. Maybe we really should leave. Kachina's already been here for too long. No, I... I'm fine. 
I don't plan on listening to that nonsense. I can hold on. Just up ahead. I'll lead the way. Besides, I can still fight, so please, help me out a little longer. Listen to me, Kachina. We'll come with you, but that's because we want to help the Y up, not because we have something to prove. You don't have anything to prove either. It's okay if you reach your limit. We'll be there for you. All right. The sooner we get this done, the better. We've already come all this way, so we might as well try to get to the bottom of this. Let's go. This way. I'll stay here and try to stall the Abyss Monster. All by yourself? That's too dangerous! It's alright. I may not be as strong as that monster, but I'm definitely more familiar with the area. Besides... I don't have much time left. If you're anything like my friend, I'm sure you're not particularly fond of goodbyes. So go. Achieve your goal. And return to the world where you belong. Thank you for everything. You're a true hero. <laughs> Thank you. No one fights alone. Does your head still hurt? Let me help you walk. I'm fine, I'm fine. You should know I'm made of stronger stuff than that. Oh, we were right. The contamination is already too severe. It's preventing the Wyab from answering our calls. All right, get ready, everyone. Time to purge the abyssal energy from this place. Careful. We've got company. Already? You really think that puny soul could slow me down? Courage in the face of futility is pure folly. He tried to get in my way, so I disposed of him. You... you killed Nalko? He would have dispersed with or without me. Rather than worrying about him, I would urge you to focus on yourself. You may have defeated others of my kind in the past, but underestimate me now, and it will be to your peril. No. The power of the Abyss is intoxicating. The destruction it seeks captivates like a masterful work of art. I strive only for the opportunity to see it up close. I thought this naive little girl was an exception, but it turns out... ...humanity is full of lambs willing to offer themselves up to the slaughter. That is the tragedy of your short lives. You understand nothing of all-encompassing power. Ancient names, pride, friendship... All empty ideas invented to give you a false sense of self-worth. They possess no power at all. The Pyro Archon created those grandiose ideals out of pure selfishness. Anything to avoid sharing power. Anything to avoid handing over the primordial gift to ordinary people like you. Don't believe me? Then ask yourself, 
Why is the Pyro Archon strong beyond measure, while you, Kachina, remain so pathetically weak? I... I... Kachina! Give me your hand. Feel that? I'm right here next to you. Thanks, Moalani. You're right. I have nothing to fear. Because I'm not alone anymore! <coughs> You're right. Maybe comforting ideals don't have any power. But you also couldn't be more wrong. You've never had to work for your own strength, so you will never understand the true source of our power! What? The courage we have to stand before you and not back down? It comes from our friendship. The power lies not in the ideal itself, but in our commitment to upholding that ideal, and in our decision to stand together and fight! Well said! Let's go, Kachina. It shouldn't take more than two of us to handle an enemy like this. Sorry in advance, but you... You deserve what's coming to you! There aren't many in Natlan who can beat us when we're together. It's time he got a taste of that kind of power. From the Aki Faster. to this world anew. Hear the inferno what he gets for underestimating you two. Fantastic work, Kachina. Absolutely fantastic. This makes me so unbelievably happy. I'm happy too, Moalani. Together we really are unstoppable. <laughs> huh? What's happening? My ancient name is... Glowing? But I thought I didn't bring it with me! It's probably a projection from the real world. But that doesn't explain why it's glowing all of a sudden. Wait... Does that mean you're... That was a bold move. Diving headfirst into the fire to save your friend. Especially in a place so overrun with abyssal corruption. Still, seeing you pull it off <laughs> was really something. Everything you said was exactly right. As isolated individuals, 
We stand no chance against the power of the Abyss. It took years worth of scars and lots of unnecessary suffering for me to understand that for myself. The Pyro Archon's plan will unite us as one. Everyone has a part to play. Only then will we have the power to defeat the strongest of foes. Who are you? Tupac, a warrior from the people of the Springs. I fought against the Abyss during the invasion 500 years ago. I've heard that name before. You were the giant who saved all of Natlan. Since you were able to awaken my words from your ancient name, that means you have fully embodied the aspirations of the Wyub. Under the name Umoja, you shall unite the tribes and save Natlan from its impending doom. M me As long as blood still runs through your veins, even the tiniest spark of steel against stone can ignite a flame. Its blaze will become one with our vision for Natlan. Even amid everlasting darkness, our bonds remain eternal. new so that's what happened what do you mean did you just figure something out 500 years ago they foresaw the very crisis we're facing now efforts to save natland started all the way back then we can go over the details once we get back we shouldn't linger here longer than we have to i know bits and pieces but i had no idea muolani was also part of the plan this sounds like something that's going to need a lot of explaining. Let's focus on saving the Wyub first! Okay, that should be enough. Why up? Why up? Can you hear me? I hear your voice, Kachina, my dear child. Great. Well then, I'm afraid it's time to say goodbye. I just wanted to make sure you were okay before we leave, but we can't afford to stay here any longer. I was going to ask why you bestowed an ancient name upon someone like me, but it's okay. I'll keep searching within myself for the answer. I'll never stop trying to improve my strength. One day, I'll live up to the hero you saw in me. You are already an outstanding child in my eyes, Kachina. No matter what happens. You are all my most beloved children. It has always been my honor to protect and nurture you. Your ancient name is just that. A name. Much like your parents chose to name you Kachina, I also gave you a name, but it need not define you. Focus on who you want to be. You are already worthy of your name. Now, you need only devote yourself to becoming a better you. The story of your ancient name is for you to continue. Just like your parents, my love for you will never change. 
no matter what the future holds. <sighs> Thank you, I am... It gladdens me to see the Pyro Archon's plan move another step towards completion. But it is time for you to leave this place. The situation here is getting worse. Go now, my children. Save Natlan on behalf of all you hold dear. I know we've never met before, Wyab, but I just wanted to say thank you for encouraging Kachina. It was exactly what she needed to hear. Whoa! What's going on? An earthquake? We're out of time. It's the power of the abyss. Quick, we need to run! It's a Sealy! The Sealy opened the way for us! You've done well. Now come home. Pyro Archon saved us. But she's not here. 
Yeah, didn't she say she used it all up? She's still in the speaker's chamber. What we saw in the Night Kingdom was just her consciousness. So you're saying her consciousness did all that? Every great display of power comes at a price. <coughs> oh, you must feel terrible, Kachina. Just hold on. We'll get you to a doctor soon. Let's get back to the stadium. The Pyro Archon said she'd have a doctor waiting for us. I recommend getting a full checkup. Just to make sure no damage gets left behind. Paimon feels okay. What about you, Traveler? Right. You always seem to do pretty well against the Abyss. Let's get going. We need to share what we learned in the Night Kingdom as well. Right. The Wyatt mentioned something about the Pyro Archon's plan. What is it exactly? I'll let her explain everything. We're all a part of the plan now. Every move we make from here on out will decide Natlin's ultimate fate. a lot less stuff here than before. It's good to see you all here in one piece. I know you must have a lot of questions, but let Koichi check you over first. It's best not to let any lingering effects of the Abyss go untreated. Thank goodness you made it back. I came here as soon as the Pyro Archon told me about your plan. Take a seat, everybody. I'll examine you one by one. All right, that should do it for now. But just to be safe, I'll perform another checkup in a couple of days. I have to say, though, I've never seen anyone react to the Abyss like you, Traveler. It's like you're completely immune to its power. He always has been special like that. He can even purify its power. Wait, now that you mention it, Paimon doesn't think she's affected either. Given the current situation, that ability will likely play a great role in the events to come. Of course. I still have patience to see, so I'll head out. Thank you, Koichi. All right, all right. We might not see eye to eye, but we both had good intentions. Just give it time. I'm sure we'll figure things out between us one day. Yeah. All right. There's so much to discuss, I don't even know where to begin. You've seen it for yourselves now. The devastation in the Night Kingdom. I'll get straight to the point. Natlan is on the verge of destruction. It's very possible our nation has less than a year before total devastation. Huh? N no. That can't... That's right. But I've only ever disclosed that fact to the handful of people working with me to save this nation. Our looming destruction is not a recent development. 
but the inevitable conclusion of the disaster the Abyss initiated 500 years ago. Mulani told us a little bit about that. 500 years ago, all the nations of Tavat were invaded by the Abyss. Unlike the other nations, Natlan never had stable and deep-rooted ley lines, so we suffered the worst of the invasion. The battle against the Abyss was exceedingly long and brutal. In the end, victory came at the cost of our civilization and countless lives. Even then, it took centuries of solving the disasters caused by the Abyss to finally achieve the peace we know today. And still, this is but a superficial victory. The forces of the Abyss have merely been driven back underground. Their threat to Natlan remains as real as ever. I... I'd never have guessed. The problems plaguing the Night Kingdom are all the more complicated because that realm is essentially functioning as Natlan's ley lines. Immediately after the war, our calculations estimated that we would have a maximum of 500 years before the Night Kingdom was completely lost to the Abyss. But at that time, we were a nation of the destitute. Our people no longer believed in victory, nor did they hold hope for the future. Our civilization was dying, our faith crumbling, and the line of power passed down from the Wyab nearly severed. If we didn't bring the nation back together, it would be foolish to even dream of defeating the Abyss in the future. So, the Archon had a long and involved discussion with the heroes of each tribe, and finally came up with a 500-year-long plan to save Natlan. So that's what happened. After finding Kachina, I encountered a strange figure who gave me a series of new memories. Since the plan was mentioned in those memories, I guess I've been chosen to play an important role in it. But there's still something I don't understand. Those memories showed me the Pyro Archon from back then. And it was you. Huh? But that doesn't make any sense! The Pyro Archon is supposed to be human! It's impossible for a human to live that long! That's right. The hardest thing for humans to overcome has always been time. Or rather, the natural limitations of our lifespan. A god can extend a human's life by using a certain amount of divine power, or subjecting them to a curse. But, as we all know, Natlan doesn't have gods like that. We can only rely on our own methods. A human life is like a flame destined to be extinguished. Five hundred years ago, I placed my life within the sacred flame. Only by dying before my time could I have the chance to wake up again. So, in other words, this is your... second life? Yes. We only managed to defeat the Abyss all those years ago because the tribes came together as one. If the Natlan of the future was to have a fighting chance, the Pyro Archons that came after the war had to rebuild the decimated tribes. The goal was to reunite the people and restore the strength of each tribe's Wyab. Once a tribe was back to its full strength, the tribe's Wyab would select a hero, indicating the tribe was once again ready for war. The Chosen would then stand by my side in defense of our nation, just like great heroes of old 500 years ago. So that means... I'm one of the Chosen? That's right. You bear the ancient name Umoja, the same one held by the hero from your tribe 500 years ago. It means unity. After your adventure in the Night Kingdom, I trust you've come to fully understand the meaning of that name. So in other words, you always knew who the Wyab were going to pick from each tribe? Yes. According to the plan, each tribe was supposed to have been fully restored by the time I awoke. But something went wrong along the way. The six heroes successfully inherited the ancient names from 500 years ago, but the intel regarding the plan wasn't passed on to them. Once again, it comes down to the deterioration of the Night Kingdom. Communication between the Sacred Flame and the Wyab has been blocked. Just like how the Ode of Resurrection failed to bring Kachina back. Exactly. It's just another tactic the Abyss is using against us. The Abyss may not possess intelligence, but its methods certainly aren't easy to counter. 
If we want to unblock that information from being passed on, my presence alone isn't enough. The ancient name bearer must establish a greater connection to their name. So, I've tried my best to help them from the sidelines. Currently, Shalonen of the Children of Echoes, Kinich of the Scions of the Canopy, and Iansan of the Collective of Plenty have all been acknowledged by their names. During your adventure, you too earned the acknowledgement of your Wyab Mualani. In the process, you gained the memories stored within your name. But we have less than a year! Yes, but we have no choice. We cannot start the plan until all the heroes have been gathered. That's also why I haven't been able to take action despite the urgency of the situation. But if you knew this whole time, why didn't you just tell me about my role in all this? Wouldn't that make everything go a lot faster? Perhaps, but the opposite could also be true. Knowing your destiny too early could mean failing to realize your full potential. Just like your determination to save Kachina, I hope your commitment to this endeavor comes from your own strength of will, rather than a sense of obligation. So I suppose you're not going to tell us who the final two heroes are then? That's right. Their time is yet to come. Putting pressure on them beforehand will only hinder their development. I can only trust in the judgment of the Wyab. I have never believed I could solve this crisis alone. In fact, it was precisely because I chose to trust and rely on others that we managed to get this far. Natland's salvation lies not in its Archon or any singular individual, but in us all. You're quite perceptive, aren't you? I thought I might get away with avoiding the topic. Huh? Oh, right! All the stuff you stored here before, where did it all go? Even though I sacrificed my power, I still needed a contingency plan to ensure you would make it back from the Night Kingdom. After all, I was the one who allowed you to take that risk, and Mualani has an important role to play in my plan. In addition to their sentimental value, the items I stored here held a much more important purpose. Fuel. Fuel? Ah, oh, so back then, that's why you... Yes. The stories embodied by those items are certainly important, but there's an even more significant trait they all share. Every item belonged to a hero of Natlan. Over time, they became imbued with a certain amount of contending fire from being carried in battle. On their own, each item's power is limited. But together, their combined effect can prove quite useful in a dire situation. By burning those items, I was able to activate the contending fire stored within them to open the boundary between the two worlds. It was a rather crude approach, so all their power was depleted in an instant, as you can see. But aren't they all precious treasures? What about their stories? <sighs> That's exactly why I dragged you all here. No matter what, I never wanted the Pyro Archon to have to use that power. Oh, I'm so sorry. You have nothing to be sorry for. You all deserve my thanks, actually. If you hadn't saved the totem pole, that area of the Night Kingdom would have been forever lost to the Abyss. And then, it would only be a matter of time before the Children of Echoes was met with disaster. Besides, when those heroes entrusted their belongings to me, or the Pyro Archon of their time, it was out of a desire to contribute to Natlan's survival. If they knew those items helped save the present-day heroes of Natlan, they would not mourn their loss. Even when you put it that way, I still feel bad. <laughs> There's no need. Remember what I told you about time? The people and the events of the past are never truly lost to us. We simply carry them with us in a different form. In that sense, we didn't lose anything at all. If you still have regrets, let them fuel your resolve in the battles to come. Your deeds will become new legends and nurture new forms of power just like the items once stored here. Well, we'd still like to return the favor. <laughs> Well, if that's the case, just treat me to a drink sometime. Now that Kachina has returned, we can finally hold the victory feast and celebrate your team's triumph in the Night Warden Wars. And we could all use the rest, that's for sure.
Plus, you'll be able to silence everyone who doubted you once and for all, Kachina. <sighs> Still, now that I know the danger we're facing, having a victory feast doesn't feel right. Try not to let it get to you. It's important to stay calm. Worrying about it will only affect your judgment. All right. You should head out. I'll join you in a bit. When I was young, I used to sit by the hot springs and listen to the stories of warriors from all over Natlan. <sighs> they attract people from all walks of life. Friends come easy here, no matter what tribe you're from. The people of the springs have never claimed the hot springs as their own private property. They are there to bring all hot spring buddies together. It's been really nice seeing the children of my tribe get older. It's helped me gradually understand the true value of the springs. I've witnessed their energy, their determination, their absolute passion for life. Ah, even when they cause trouble, I never manage to hold on to my anger for long. It's unbelievable how quickly they worm their way back into my good graces. I'm certain Mualani will become a great warrior when she grows up. She possesses infinite potential. I can see it. One day, when I'm no longer in fighting form, I'll come here and tell stories to all the children, just like those warriors did for me. So, you better get busy, Pyro Archon, or I'll end up running out of stories. <laughs> Our nation is engulfed in darkness. Our tribes stand divided. And yet you promise victory in the distant future. The Abyss is a cunning enemy. One that I faced in battle many times. Were that not the case, I would never understand exercising this degree of caution. My rage will never know absolution. Then my power will no longer aid you in victory. But you came to me because you knew you could convince me with just a single sentence. I understand your choice. The heroes of today will forge the path ahead with blood and fire. Just remember to earn us the victory we are owed. Otherwise, rest assured, I'll find a way to collect the debt. For Natlan. So... You're gonna head 500 years in the future to serve as the Pyro Archon again? But what about the you from right now? You're just gonna die? You can't ask her those questions and expect her to answer, my dear. The decision is hers to make, and she deserves our support. We will do everything we can to rebuild the tribes. Don't you worry. 
Even across time, we will all do our part to fight for Natlan's future. Yeah, Mom's right. We'll always believe in you, sis. Oh, seriously though, Dad should be here. Where is he? I... I imagine he... he didn't know what to say, so he chose not to come at all. Don't take it to heart, my dear. That's just who he is. Just remember, no matter what happens in the future, we will always love you. I'll come find you one day. I know I can't live that long, but I'll think of something. Oh, there has to be a way for us to meet again one day. If there's an answer out there somewhere, I'm gonna find it. So, don't forget about me. If that's your decision, then you have my full support, Archon. May our children live to see such a lovely son. For Natlan! No one fights alone. The rules are my legacy. They shall grant us the strength to overcome the next tragedy. War forged the six tribes, taught us how to fight, instilled in us what it means to love. Who will be the one to bring this to an end? We are the inheritors of memory and legend. Those who grew alongside sun and wind. Those who forged our own destiny and future. That is Natland's fire. The lifeblood of our nation. Chaska would be here, so I just came to deliver some medicine. I was about to leave, actually. But it's not that I don't want to celebrate Kachina and the others. I'm so glad she made it back. It's just... Well, I'll make things awkward if I'm around my sister right now. Ah, oh, well, you two had a fight, so Paimon can understand. She didn't cause any trouble during your trip, right? Yeah, she was super helpful. She gave us a lot of useful information about the Abyss. That's good. That's all I needed to know. Is there a reason you asked? You were pretty outspoken when we first met, but now it's like you're holding something back. Uh, maybe it seemed unreasonable, picking that fight with her before you left, but I did it for a reason. Her impulse to fight is extremely strong. Her mental strength helps her rein it in, but she still loses control sometimes. I had no idea what you might face in the Night Kingdom, so I didn't want to take any chances. So, what you're saying is... Okay, so maybe it sounds a little stupid, but it works pretty well. It helps her keep her cool for a little while, at least. Anyway. I'm just glad you were able to make it back safe and sound. That's all I wanted. What? Do you really have to go that far? Can't you just talk it out? No way. Chaska never opens up about her own pain, especially to her family. 
She can't learn about this. I appreciate the understanding, and don't worry. I'll find a way to help her ease this burden. Anyway, I need to get going. Enjoy the celebration. Oh, and if you ever need a doctor, you know who to find. Huh. Who would have thought there was a deeper reason behind their arguing? In the end, it's all the Abyss's fault. Paimon's had enough of them. Hmm. <laughs> Don't worry. I always win anyway. Give up. Hesitating will do you no good. What do you need? What do you need? You must choose carefully. Let's give a huge round of applause to our brave young warrior, Kachina! Woohoo! Well done, Kachina. Thank you, everyone. I'm so glad I finally made it. I always knew you could do it. With so much potential at your age, you have a great future ahead of you. You're one to talk. Don't think I didn't know you were the first person to abandon your team. I'll be dealing with you when we get back. I, I had no choice. My friend invited me. I couldn't just say no. Oh, really? So you weren't just trying to get ahead in the first round? I wasn't, I swear. I just happened to find that bearer injured in the wild. So I stopped to bandage his wounds. When he insisted on repaying the favor, what was I supposed to do? I'm just one person. I figured Kachina would have no trouble replacing me. But the fact of the matter is that after your departure, everyone else started thinking about swapping teams too. I'm really sorry, Kachina. It was wrong of us to abandon you like that. It's amazing that you still made it all the way through to the Night Warden Wars. That's the highest honor. So, uh, what about you guys? Did you make it far? Um... Our team captain drank too much the night before the competition and turned up late to the stadium on the day. We got disqualified. <laughs> Serves you all right. No sympathy for me. All right, all right. There's no need to be like that, Uncle Pakal. Um... Dear friends, I'd like to say a few words. Firstly, I'm grateful to my friends and our great Archon for helping to bring me back. This Traveler and his companion Paimon are some of the strongest people I've ever met. If they were allowed to participate in the pilgrimage, I have no doubt that they'd win the whole thing. They've agreed to let me learn from them. With their help, I believe I can become even stronger still. And let's not forget my good friends, Moalani, Chaska, Kanich, and Ayansan. They all helped the Traveler and Paimon figure out a way to bring me back from the Night Kingdom. They too deserve to be called our heroes, so please give another round of applause for them. Thank you so much! Well said! <laughs> I'll drink to that. How does it feel being a hero, Kachina? To be honest, it's a bit overwhelming. It all just feels so... surreal. Well, you better get used to it! Next up, Undefeated Champion! Hey, 
Hey, please don't make fun of me. <laughs> You're here. Have some fruit juice. I got it specially for you two. How did you know? That's my mom's favorite! You look like you've still got questions. Ask away. Because they had their own lives to live. The thought of telling them, abandon your families and everyone you love, and come with me to the end of time. For in 500 years, Natlan will be destroyed? It seemed too cruel. You could just as easily point out that everything in this world would come to an end eventually. But life is short. And beyond a point, it just doesn't seem real. Imagine if I said, let's leave right now and go save the sun because it'll flame out in a few million years. It would sound quite ridiculous. I couldn't make them shoulder that burden with me. Besides, every generation will have its heroes, this one included. The plan could still work without them. Or, of course, without me. But since I was the one who came up with the plan, I felt duty-bound to see it through to the end. Paimon suddenly remembering that portrait in your room. Was that your family from back then? Yes, it was. So when you asked me who my sister grew up to be, the truth is that very little information survives. From what I've been able to piece together, I can conclude with a reasonable degree of confidence that she ended up as an architect and artist. She played an instrumental role in rebuilding the scions of the Canopy tribe, designing and building many houses. But of course, um... None of her buildings are around anymore. Still, it was an impressive achievement, and I'm very proud of her. You feel lost keenly. It seems to stir up feelings of regret in you. But this is something I have long since come to terms with. This is a war, and there can be no war without loss. I am already far more fortunate than those who lost their lives to the Abyss. The people of Natlan look to me as their Archon, and the weight of their expectations is mine to bear. I must see our fate through to the very end, no matter what I may find there. Yeah, doesn't that mean the way everything ends has already been written, including your plan? I suppose, but so what? Don't forget, time takes many forms. The past, present, and future coexist, and all are equally important. Even if the future ends in destruction, there's still no reason to give up on the here and now. And it's precisely because we humans cannot know our fate that we will never give up on our struggle. This is a pivotal moment. We are still two heroes short. Well, three, to be precise. There's one further hero who I'm hoping to get on my side. Your resistance to the corrupting power of the Abyss is truly remarkable. It would easily make you an all-important figure in the upcoming battle. 
If you agree to join us, you will not only gain my full support in your journey, but I will also forge a brand new ancient name for you. Ancient names can be forged? They can. Several strict conditions must be met, but if they couldn't be forged at all, then the number of them in circulation would have long dwindled to zero. Possessing an ancient name would mean that your adventures in Natlan are recorded in full. Your stories would be remembered by our people for all the years to come. The Ode of Resurrection may have temporarily lost its power, but still, take this as my personal guarantee that I shall never let you fall. Just like in the Night Kingdom, I will be there for you. That is a promise I will fulfill at all costs. This nation always honors its heroes. Yeah, we can't just ignore the situation here. Wonderful. Then I'll reach out to Shilonen right away. She's the one who will forge the name. We've never forged an ancient name for an outlander before, but I trust she'll find a way. My lord, we've received word that the Pyro Archon has lost much of her power. Although your injury complicates things, this is most certainly the opportune time to seize the Gnosis. Victory and defeat are rules, not outcomes. I have never taken advantage of an opponent in a time of weakness, and I don't intend to start now. As for you, I must confess, I did not expect that little trick of yours to save the day. No matter how dense the fog, as long as the sun remains, we cannot turn day into night. She could have dispelled it. She simply chose not to. <sighs> you don't have much time, and you're injured on top of that. What do you plan to do next? I'm beginning to see just how useful you may turn out to be. You heard something from here, didn't you? Everyone hold hands! 